My Richard's automatic transmission lockup kit was throwing codes every 20 to 30 kilometers and it was driving me nuts. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you how I fixed it. I bought a Richard's automatic transmission lockup kit for the 200 series Land Cruiser behind me there. And I bought it because I was cooking my transmission towing my caravan. It was just getting so hot all of the time, even on the slightest of hills. Sorry about the flies, guys. Ooh, it's really bad at the moment. Anyway, I had some problems with it. Not at first. First, it worked like an absolute charm. And then all of a sudden, it started throwing codes. Now, I wasn't too concerned about that because I was warned by people online that they can throw the occasional code and it might happen once or twice a year. And I've got the ultra gauge, so I was able to just reset it on the fly. First time it happened, I thought, bugger me, got a code, no worries, reset it, and all was good again all of a sudden they started showing up all of the time so before we get started on the problems and the solution let's just talk about lockup kits in general and why the bloody hell would you put one on if you know that they're going to throw codes because there is one out there the stock lock that doesn't throw codes apparently i haven't had one installed i wanted to buy one but ironically they were out of stock and the richards kit that i've got was way cheaper i got it on special on ebay with a discount code for just a little over 600 dollars. it was incredible so that versus a thousand dollars plus for a stock lock i thought it was worth giving it a crack the other reason i went with the richards lockup kit rather than some of the other brands out there like wholesales automatic or the stock lock was because on the land cruiser pages everywhere everyone's been using richards lockup kits for bloody decades so I figured if they've been out there that long and nobody's had any dramas, then that's probably the way to go. And then I had dramas. God damn it, I always end up having dramas. Like flies right now. They're absolutely killing me. I'm trying to not swish them while I'm doing this video, but it's not working. So the first problem that I had came a couple of months after I installed it, or maybe even only a month after I installed it. It'd been working flawlessly. And then all of a sudden it just stopped locking up altogether. I sent an email to Richards and they were brilliant. They got back to me straight away. They sent me out a whole brand new kit um, and I replaced the control box and the reload, uh, no, actually just the control box and it started working no problem. So I sent the other stuff back to them with the replied paid envelope that they sent me, all oh, the flies. And you know what? Oh. And all was good again and I was so happy. The only problem was, that about a month ago, I started getting codes. Now, I was told that I was gonna get codes with a Richards lockup kit maybe once or twice a year. Really common thing that happens. The computer thinks that there's a fault and it throws up a code. I wasn't worried about it. I've got the ultra gauge in there. I was able to reset them while I was driving. So it really wasn't a hassle until it started doing it every 30 or 40 kilometers. Now, I was worried because I thought something had gone seriously wrong with my gearbox or the lockup kit had gone wrong again. Maybe I've installed it wrong. Maybe I've done something bad. I got back in touch with Richards. They were very good again. They gave me um, some impedance values to check for their resistor and for some of the other bits and pieces. And I went ahead and started looking at it and decided, hmm, I think there's another problem here. But before we get into how I fixed it, let's talk about why I bought it in the first place. So, as you know, we bought a caravan and I've been towing it. And I had noticed even before we had the caravan that the transmission temperatures on the ultra gauge would get up pretty high, over 100 degrees quite regularly when climbing hills. And, well, I don't like getting things over 100 degrees. There's going to be a lot of people that say that's fine, that's not a problem. But whether it's water temperature in the engine or whether it's your transmission coolant temperature, I don't like hitting over 100 degrees. And that bothered me, especially because I do a lot of towing on the beach with the jet ski and I also do a bit of beach driving and we do a lot of hills around here as well. The lockup kit was on the list of things to do even before I bought the caravan but there was one incident just after I bought the expedition that made me decide I had to do this as a matter of urgency and that was when I was climbing up an off-road hill it was just a forestry track it was raining it was about nine degrees outside I was traveling at about 30 20 30 kilometers an hour up this hill I glanced down at the ultra gauge and I was doing about 125 degrees on my uh, transmission coolant temperature and that's just that's unacceptable and when it's cold and raining and I'm doing 20 k's an hour and I'm overheating my gearbox that's not going to be a long-term scenario that I can live with so I went ahead and got the Richards lockup kit 
Alrighty, so what I thought I'd do is do a little bit of a test run. I'm a little bit out of town now, and I'm going to show you the difference between having the lock-up kit turned on and the lock-up kit turned off, and how it affects the transmission oil temperature as I'm climbing a long hill. So before we do the hill climb, let's talk a little bit about how the Richards lock-up kit works, and it's pretty similar for all of the lock-up kits, not just the Richards one. But basically what happens is, with the Richards one, it's set to 80 kilometers an hour. So if you're in auto mode, which I'm in at the moment, as soon as the car reaches 80 kilometers an hour, torque converter clutches are locked up and you get no more slippage. Interestingly enough, what that seems to do with the Land Cruiser is it also stops it hunting for gears. I'm not exactly sure why that is. I don't think that's done on purpose because there's no remapping done or anything like that. It just seems to help it to maintain that power and probably speed so that when the cruise control is operating, it doesn't keep thinking that it's losing speed and kicking back gears all the time and hunting, which is a really pain in the neck thing that the 6-speed and the 200 series does, especially when you're towing in hilly country. It just hunts and hunts and hunts all the time. And when it's hunting, it drops in and out of lock all of the time, which is just super annoying. You'll see here, uh, at the moment, I'm cruising at around about 100 kilometers an hour, just lifted my foot off the accelerator and put it back down and that's sort of the trick that you do in a 200 series to force it into sixth gear because it really likes to hang on to fifth gear unless you do that i mean obviously you can change the sport shift into six speed but that's a whole different thing altogether now my transmission temperature is currently at 71.9 or torque converter temperature well, actually they're both uh, even at the moment we're about to uh, head up a big hill coming out of my town of Bustleton. Some people call it the Seven Mile. Um, it just basically leaves the bay area. Now, what I'm going to do, I've got my torque converter lockup kit on. I'm just going to switch that off. Now we're in the factory configuration. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set my cruise control to 70 kilometers an hour. Now, the reason why I'm doing it so slow is, believe it or not, that's actually going to make it hotter. So just let it slow down here. I'll do the same thing with both settings. Okay, we're at 70 and I've set the cruise control. Now, the reason why I'm doing it at 70 is there are actually a lot of hills that you want to do 70 kilometers an hour up because that might be the speed limit or you're stuck behind slower traffic like you're stuck behind a truck or a caravan. And if you are towing a caravan, you might want to be doing 70 kilometers an hour anyway. Now here you can see that rapidly the transmission temperature is climbing and so is the engine temperature. They're both climbing at about the same speed currently and that makes sense because the transmission cooler is part of the radiator. And it's just shifted down but I think it's still spinning. Let me just, yeah, still slipping there. You can see as I push the accelerator, even though the cruise control's on, the gearbox is slipping. And you can see that by the taco moving up and down Whereas if it was locked, it would stay stationary and you'd just hear the engine load change. Now you can see that the automatic transmission temperature, or the torque converter temperature especially, uh, the pan temperature is still 75, but the torque converter temperature has jumped ahead of the engine temperature now and it's starting to heat soak and it's starting to climb much more rapidly than the engine temperature. It's about 25 degrees today, so it's not super hot. Um, reasonably warm, but not terrible. Now we're at 88.8 we're still climbing. Now I'm not towing anything today, I'm just empty, I mean I've got the drawers in the fridge in the back but that's it and uh, we've only got, a, well the, it looks like the sub tank's nearly empty um, so we're just running pretty much on the main tank now and we've got up to 90 degrees so far and we're still climbing. We've just had a bit of an area where it flattens off for a little bit and now we're going up another sort of reasonably steep ascent and you can see climbing once again, we're nearly at 92 degrees, we're now 92.5, and she's still climbing, the car's climbing, and so is the transmission temperature. See now we're climbing up 98 degrees, and we're starting to flatten off on the road here, so it'll probably start to level off a little bit. You can imagine if I was towing three ton up here, I'd already be well over 100 degrees. We're just about to hit the second part of the hill. We've just hit 100 degrees, gone up to 101.9. Still got a bit of the hill to go, and she's still rising. See, cooling temperatures are right, 87 degrees. That's all 
we're up for a big hill on a warm day. Now I've got no aftermarket coolers or anything, the uh, gearbox oil cooling and everything is completely factory in this car and uh, there's no, no change whatsoever to any of that. Okay, so without towing, I've hit 103.1 degrees centigrade on my transmission cooler as I've just crested the top of the main part of this climb out of town here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn around, I'm gonna engage the Richards lockup system, and we'll see what the difference is. A tip you might think 103 degrees isn't that bad but in the rain and cold of Manjima I was climbing up a gravel road with the caravan on the back at about 20 kilometers an hour I looked down at the transmission temperature this was before I had the lockup kit one of the things that inspired me to get it and I was at 125 degrees centigrade on the torque converter temperatures I didn't even think that it was going to be hot I was just crawling up this hill, it was cold as out, so the windscreen wall up was going flat out, and I was cooking the gearbox. Now I can do that in second gear with the torque converter lockup kit in, and I can just idle up those hills without heating up anything, and it's just a much, much better way to be. It makes me feel much more mechanically sympathetic to the poor old car. When we're asking it to do all of these things, like driving through deep sand or towing really big vans off-road, or even towing big vans on road when you've got big hills. Remember these cars are designed to be able to tow, but they're not designed to do it all day, every day. And for this old girl, she does a lot of her case towing heavy loads. And so I like to look after it, I change the oil more often, and I run this lockup kit. Okay, I've engaged the lockup kit. I'm just turning around now and we're gonna head back up the road. So I've only put it into automatic mode, which means I'm still slipping now through the gears until I get into the 80 kilometer an hour range. Once we get to 80 kilometers an hour, you'll be able to see on the speedo and the taco there that, there we go, it's just dropped in. And now, if I move the accelerator, it kicks back if I push too hard. But if I just let go of the accelerator and coast down this little hill before we start going up, you can see that the RPMs don't change. Now it's more like a manual gearbox. I'm going to hit the uh, cruise control and slow back down to 70 and we're going to climb up this hill with the lockup kit engaged. And I'm going to hit the, or, uh, the low lock button so that it stays engaged even at 70 kilometers an hour. Uh, I'm going to change the gears manually. Now because I'm doing it less than 80 kilometers an hour, I have had to engage the low lock button, which forces the Richards lockup kit to activate uh, anywhere over 38 kilometers an hour. This, you can change these settings on the Richards kit, which is one of the reasons why I got it. It has dip switches inside of the control unit where you can change what speeds you want it to disengage and engage for the different modes. What I have had to do though, because I'm doing 70 and because I've put it in low lock, I've had to shift into sports mode and what have I got it in there? I've just got holding fourth gear. Now, you wouldn't normally have to do this. It's just for this experiment because I chose 70 kilometers an hour. Probably a mistake, I should have done 80, but chosen 70 kilometers an hour, so I've had to do this. But you can see here, I'm running 84 degrees on the coolant temperature for the engine, but the tool converter is actually running cooler than the coolant that's supposed to be cooling it. It's at 78.8, and we're still climbing up this first steep section of the hill. That's a pretty dramatic difference. Not only is the torque converter cooler, but the engine temperature is cooler too. And that's probably for two reasons. One, the car's not working as hard. It's actually just idling along here at, what, 17, 1800 RPMs, and it's using way less throttle position. You can see the engine load is down, and it's not actually having to work as hard, so it's not producing as much heat. EGTs will be down, coolant temperature will be down, and of course, the transmission temperature is down. But the second reason is, that because the radiator that cools the engine is also cooling the transmission oil, 
it's not creating heat in the radiator and taking away from its cooling efficiency for cooling the engine temperature. Alright, we're still plodding along up here and this thing is just staying at around 78 degrees and the engine temperatures actually dropped down one degree from where it was before, which is really quite a remarkable change. We're coming up to the first leveled out section here and the car just feels totally different to drive. Like, it just doesn't feel like it's working. You can hear it in the exhaust note. It's just not running as hard as it was when the torque converter was unlocked. All right, we've just finished this little flat bit and we're now uh, starting the second part of the climb and the, the coolant temperature has dropped down to 82 degrees and our transmission is still sitting at 78.1 really no change there whatsoever. This thing is just idling up this hill now. Not a worry in the world. Of course the other advantage is when I'm going back down the hill I have full engine braking which I don't have when the transmission lockup kit isn't engaged. The ECU will try an engine brake in the 200 series if it feels that the car is speeding up and you've got zero throttle position it will actually start to engage the transmission torque converter and do a little bit of engine braking but that actually has the opposite effect of what you would think it would be in that it also heats up the transmission temperature because now you're slipping the gearbox to try and slow the car down and it's not very good at doing it either but because i've actually got the lockup kit engaged on going down this hill i've got proper engine braking as if i was in a manual car and i'm not creating any more temperature in the gearbox or the engine radiator 76 degrees by the time we got to the top of the hill and 79 degrees for the engine temperature that is absolutely remarkable as far as the difference between the two settings goes. And that's why I got this thing, because I've watched other people do this. I've done transmission lockup kits in previous cars by doing my own bodgy wiring, but it's great nowadays that we can buy these things from people like Richards. So as you can see there, the lockup kit really does work well, but what I have to really, really emphasize here is how much it changes the driving experience it is incredible. When you're towing and, and that hopping of gears, it's just diabolical. But it, as I said on the road, for some reason, it stops it from kicking back all of the time. And when it does have to kick back, it's instantaneous. With the factory programming on the ECU, when it kicks back a gear, it unlocks the torque lock. It then slips and it goes up and the taco climbs really, really high. Then it goes down a gear, then it locks again, and then it goes back into the next gear, unlocks, locks, and it's just farting around the whole time. With this setup, all it does is it just kicks back a gear and you get up the hill and then it drops back into the next gear again. It's just a different car to drive. But let's go have a look inside and I'll show you where the problem was and how I fixed it. And it's dead easy. You're not going to believe this. So the instructions say to just pull back this bit of carpet here, or vinyl, because I've got the poverty pack in the GX, and to just pop the uh, control unit and the relays in here against the transmission tunnel, which is exactly what I did. I didn't particularly think it was that great a way of doing it, but up all under here, I've got radios. You can have a look in the video up in the card there if you want to see how I installed all the radios, but I've got radio gear all under there. So I just stuck it in where they told me to. Now, Thing is, I installed this in the winter and I didn't have any problems. Then it started to get warm, and that's when it started to throw codes, and I didn't even put two and two together. But what's happening is, because the GX has no insulation here at all, this transmission tunnel gets really hot, and it must have been overheating the module that was there and all the relays, which I've now tucked up. I don't know if you can see them. I've tucked them all up here under where the blower fan is for the air conditioner. That's where the relays and the control module are. And Bob's your uncle. No more bloody errors. As simple as that. I checked all the impedances as per the, uh, as per the directions from Richards in the email and everything seemed okay. So I was really worried. I thought the gearbox was buggered. I thought I'd installed it wrong, but you know what? All it was was this heat. Now this might not be a problem for people that don't have GXs because I imagine that you know, if you've got a Sahara or something, you probably have sound deadening and uh, some more insulation there. All I've got is this tiny little bit of fluff here on the back of this vinyl. And even through the vinyl in the summer, when you turn the van on a long trip on a 40 degree day, this actually gets warm, warm enough that you want to move your foot away from it. So 
it was just overheating the module and probably causing extra resistance in the relays or in the wiring looms or whatever and causing the car to go into limp mode so if you've got a Richards lockup kit or any lockup kit, because I've noticed a couple of them actually tell you to do exactly the same thing with your installation, don't go putting it there. Get it out of the way. Get it away from the heat. Even if you do have insulation there, I think it's a really bad place for it to go. So there you go. Nice top tip for somebody who's getting codes on their Richards lockup kit all the time. Just move the computer and the relay pack, and boom, your problems will go away. Anyway, I hope this really helps some people out because I have seen threads about people who get these errors all of the time and they are a real pain in the neck and it's a, such a simple fix. I'll send Richards an email too and tell them this is what I found and hopefully they can offer that advice to people who have the same issue and uh, get out there and enjoy yourselves. Thanks for watching. Do all that subscribe, like, bell stuff if you think the videos are any good and I'll see you in the next one.